Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. Uh, so you've already seen part one of my huge unhaul but this is part two and there might be a couple more that I add before the world opens up and I can trade them in but it won't be like a whole lot and I'll have it on a wrap up or whatever telling you what I'm going to be unhauling so it won't be like a surprise but I don't think I'm gonna make another unhaul video so let's just start with the fun stuff the textbooks so the first textbook that I'm gonna try to trade for some credit is teaching to change the world the fourth edi edition by Jenny Oakes, Martin Lipton, Lauren Anderson, and Jamie Stillman. And I've had this book for over a year now, and I don't use it, I don't refer to it. So it's time to unhaul. And then this one I just used last semester. It was my logistics class and it's second language acquisition myths by Stephen Brown and Jennifer Larson Hall honestly I'm not gonna read this again uh, it was hard enough the first time so that one's gone I do keep some of my textbooks like I have all my writing ones back down there at the bottom um but they help me think of things to write help inspire me sometimes and they're just like a nice little reference to keep but those ones I'm not gonna mm -hmm. and then I guess since I have more on this side <sighs> so I jumped on a couple bandwagons before I really knew these authors and I'm regretting it. I shouldn't have spent the money on it, but it's okay. I'm just going to trade them in. And that is Ruth Ware is one of them. So I got The Woman in Cabin 10, The Lying Game, and The Death of Miss Westaway. I got them all because they are, she's super hyped on booktube and everyone seems to love her books and I've been getting into thrillers and I really want to read a good horror but uh these were just not good for me I did not like the thrillers I didn't like the writing style I felt that these two were very slow and I just did not care for it so I dnf both these and I'm not even going to bother with the woman in cabin 10, even though it was the one I was most excited about. I just, I just don't think I can deal with the writing style. It's just not for me, but it's okay. And I'm not trying to like bash on your favorite book. If Ruth Ware is your favorite author, that's great. I'm happy, but just personally, not my style. And then another author that I jumped on her bandwagon before I read anything by her, uh, I got like a lot of uh, uh, ebooks by her, and then I, I recently, like deleted them because I'm not gonna read them. So why sit on my uh, Kindle or whatever? But that is Colleen Hoover. November 9 and I have tried to re-read this like four or five times and I just I can't remember anything and I just honestly don't care so honestly guys I'm just not much of a contemporary reader anyway don't like romance in my novels so that's probably why I'm not a big fan, but that's fine. Now, I have a huge stack up here that's 
I've read them all. Or tried to read them all. And now I'm just going to give them to someone who will love them more than me. So in March, my hus I landed on Hubby Pick in Bookopoly. And my husband picked The Shack by William P. Young. So this is a story about a girl who goes missing. Her dad believes she died and he believes she was murdered in the shack in Oregon. And like four years later, she is yet to be found and he gets an invitation from God to go back to the shack. And when he goes to the shack, he meets God and Jesus and they talk and it kind of brings him back to the real world and it helps it basically saves him because ever since that fateful day he wasn't the same but after his uh, revelation with God it basically saved his life and it was enjoyable although I'm not much into religious reading I am Christian myself and I do believe in God and heaven and things like that. I just usually don't uh, turn to it in my literature. And I gave this a three star. I, you know, I mean, I read it, I enjoyed it, but I just won't read it again. That's the only reason I'm getting rid of it. And then, let's see what this one is. Ah, okay. I was dead for 13 minutes and now I want to know why by Sarah Pinberg and uh, I'm actually I loved this book if I'm being quite honest with you but I know the mystery and I know how it ends and I know the surprising twists and turns that this book takes therefore I don't think I'll read it again Mysteries are hard for me because I love a good mystery. I love a thriller. This isn't a thriller. It's a mystery. But I love a good mystery. And I just don't see myself rereading them because I already know the big reveal, you know? So I don't keep many of them. I did keep a mystery in my Books and La La taste test. Uh, because it was so freaking good, but I don't know if I'm going to reread it, so I might, we'll have to see. But I typically don't keep mysteries just because, if I've already read them, just, you know, unless it's like life changing. The next one is Seafire by Natalie C. Parker. I give this a three stars as well. And it's like female pirates and it was actually the first hundred pages was really good and the last like 50 pages was amazing but everything in between was so boring and so slow and I just couldn't do it but they do leave you on a cliffhanger that makes me want to pick up the second one but really I was so bored that I, I just can't can't do that to myself and then I believe this is yeah okay this is the same series uh, I only read peaches by Jody Lynn Anderson but there is also the secret the secrets of peaches and they go together it was compared to the sisterhood of the traveling pants I did not get that vibe from it, so I was not exactly thrilled when I read it. It wasn't bad. It was just kind of slow, kind of boring. I think I gave this one a three stars as well. So, yeah, it just wasn't for me. Let's see. Then I read Me and Me by Alice Coopers. And, uh... I gave this a three stars as well. So the thing is that I didn't buy it. So Lark 
goes on a date with this guy that she likes on her 17th birthday. They go boating. And while on the uh, boating, right before they take off, she runs into Annabelle, who is her old babysitting charge. And they said, yeah, meet us out in the water. And then uh, while on the boat with her date, Lark and Alec hear Annabelle screaming and uh, her mom screaming for help because Annabelle is drowning. And when Lark and Alec both jump in to save her, uh, Alec hits his head and she, Lark, can only pick to save Alec or Annabelle. And the thing was that I just didn't understand why it was even a choice. Like, I just feel like it's instinct to go for the child and try to save your boyfriend. Like, it was your first date. You don't even know him that well. That might sound heartless and cold, but I just didn't buy it. So, I won't reread that. Then they all fall down by Rachel Housel Hall. This was supposed to be a really good thriller about like a beach getaway. She, this girl, want a beach uh, island vacation, but she goes on a reality show and there's like no phones, no electronics, that kind of thing. And then people start dying one by one. And it sounds amazing, but it really was not good at all. The killing doesn't start till so far into it, and it was just really slow, really boring. I sound like a broken record. Slow, boring, I don't like it, but I mean, it's true. In Darkling Wood by Emma Carroll is a... Alice in Wonderland retelling, but like inside the Enchanted Forest, did not finish it. Don't plan to. Not worth your time. This Gorgeous Game by Donna Frittis. Uh, this is actually the first book on my books that will self-destruct in 12 months that I read, and I gave it two stars, and it's like in this book, you have to read between the lines and make your own assumptions, and I don't like books like that. I like you just to tell me, black and white, you know? Like, in books, life is black and white, but in real life, it's not. There's gray areas. Such a good girl, I DNF'd because Riley Stone is perfect, everyone loves her. It's by Amanda K. Morgan. Um, but everyone loves her, and just all the girls want to be her, and all the guys want to be with her, and I'm sure if I would have kept re reading, that I find out she's not as perfect as she seems, but you know what? I don't care. I'm not gonna give it enough time. I just couldn't, didn't like it. This one is gonna get me so much hate. But it's Peter Pan by J.M. Barrier, and, uh, everyone knows the Peter Pan story. So I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I was expecting a high-stakes adventure, and I got none of that. It was not very fun. Monsterland, I DNF'd, uh, by James Crowley. I thought it was gonna be, like, Halloween Town, uh... I gave it like 62 pages, which probably isn't enough. Oh, hey, someone went. Thanks. Um, which probably isn't enough, but it's enough for me. And I just, it wasn't Halloween County. Then, The Incredible Journey by Sheila Burnford. So, I'm the unpopular opinion here, but I absolutely love the movies. I grew up on the movies of the same name, and the book was not like the movies at all. 
and uh, I wanted the talking dogs, the talking animals, the adventure, and I got this narrator that didn't care, and I didn't care, so yeah. Then I think I'm the unpopular opinion here too, but I am Legend by Richard Matheson. Love the movie, hate the book. And I just didn't understand how this is the same book as the movie. And yeah. And then The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. You know, let's just keep up the rule of the unpopular opinion. I can't, I don't remember what this was about. I remember that there were very unlikable characters and in the like roaring 20s, I think. And there's like parties and boringness. Then, uh, <laughs> Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. This one I actually enjoyed. I gave it three stars again. Um, it's got camping and the part and survival, which are the parts that I like. But the parts that I didn't like was the slow burn romance, the... I actually didn't mind the friends to enemies to friends to enemies to lovers situation. I didn't mind that, you know? It gave it structure. It kind of like gave it backbone. I don't know. I, I enjoyed that part of it. But I did not like the slow burnness of it. And... I think that's the only part I really didn't like. It's actually a really good book. Uh, other than the slow burn romance. Because I hate slow burn romance. I don't really like insta love either though. So it has to be somewhere in the middle. Because insta love seems so fake. It might be like insta... Not love. Loaf? No, not loaf. Insta... Oh my gosh, I can't remember the word. But it's like, you just really, really like someone, but you don't, you can't love them just instantly. But I also don't like the slow, slow, slow burn. It's gotta be kinda like in the middle. I'm so picky about everything and I'm so sorry. Then, I've actually changed my mind about this one. I'm gonna keep it. It is... Matilda by Roald Dahl, and, uh, I do like the movie better, and that's why I was gonna get rid of it, but I think this would be a really good reread, uh, easy middle grade to read, and for that reason, I'm actually gonna be keeping that one, so ignore it. It wasn't here. All Over Creation by Ruth Ozaki. I will be getting rid of Unhauling It. It's a book that I don't remember a single thing about. Other than like Idaho and potatoes and like, I think there's something to do with like a love story or something. But I didn't enjoy it, obviously, since I don't remember it. Then, um, we're down to my last four. So, two of these are going to surprise you. So, I think I'm going to do... I'm going to start with a fairy tale, or a retelling of a fairy tale. It's The Queen of Hearts by Colleen Oakes. It is Evil's Rising in Wonderland. Um, so I've tried to read this book several times. And it was on my 20 books to read in 2020. And you know what? I'm counting it as DNF'd, so I'm counting it as read. Uh, I could not get into the writing style, and I just couldn't do it. The next one, people might be mad at me about, but it's okay. I read for me, so. The Kite Runner by Khalid Hoisin and... I've always said that I would read this because it is like a historical type thing of Iraq. It's about this person from Iraq and uh, 
I want to be interested, but she sat on my shelf for so long that I'm not going to read it. And another autobiography that I actually got recently was The Upside, a memoir by Abdel Cello. And, um, I think I bought it because I went to see the movie with Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart. And I absolutely love the movie. But I think with, uh, mo stories about someone's life, I need to stick with the movie version. I know I'm such a book sinner, but the movie version I love. The uh, book version always seems to bore me. And I know I shouldn't say that because it's someone else's life, but I just, I just can't. And this other one, this last book on the Sun Hall, is uh, going to surprise some people, maybe. It was my last book on my five-star predictions list. It is Splendle by Shauna Slayton. So, this is kind of like a backwards retelling of Sleeping Beauty. And I gave this a shot, guys. I've tried to read it a few times. And I got to chapter 21, which is 148, 149. But I was so bored. Like, parts of it were really interesting to me. It was like, being woken up by a prince a hundred years you've been sleeping for a hundred years you get woken up by a prince and then you're just supposed to marry him no questions asked and her reaction was very honest like I don't even know you why would I marry you type of thing and for me I loved that aspect of it but it was so slow and boring and such a slow burn romance and honestly I think that Shauna Slayton wrote a different a different love like a love triangle maybe I didn't get far enough into it to know if it's gonna be a triangle or not um, but I had the vibes of it, the essence of it. Um, so I'm just not interested. I wanted to love it, you know, it was on my five star predictions. But the thing is that all the retellings that I've read so far this year, or tried to read, DNF'd, um, have not been good. I just do not enjoy retellings. So next year, I'm not going to pretend that I do, and I'm not going to keep buying <laughs> retellings. I wanted to really love it. There is, okay, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, there is one retelling that I would like to buy or rent from the library or read. Just, I want to read it. And that is uh, the Marissa Meyer collection um cinder she's like a robot or something i don't know but it's a retelling of cinderella and then it's a whole series of different fairy tales that one sounds really good to me and it'll be like my last chance for retellings because even the one that i was most excited for could either be splendle or her so dark and lonely uh, Curse to Dark and Lonely I read, but only because I had the audio ver book version. If I wouldn't have had the audio version, I would not have been able to finish it. This one, I'm just, just so bored with them. And I'm sorry if I bashed on your favorite book. I wasn't trying to. Just for me, these are not my style. They're not what I 
personally like, but like I said from the very beginning of my channel, I'm still learning who I am as a reader and what types of things I like. I've learned that I love mysteries. Like a good mystery, mm, it'll just suck me in and then I'll play the whodunit game. Even a romance mystery, you're like, romance mystery? What's that? It's like things like Tell Me Three Things or Simon vs. The Homo Sapiens Agenda where you fall in love online and then you're wondering who did you really fall in love with because they use a different name and then you're like going through your mind ooh is it him is it him is it her is it ooh who is it and I love that kind of thing and I love mystery just in general and then thrillers are amazing horror books like I haven't found really a great one yet but I'm excited to get some like final girls type books I actually do really want to read Final Girls by Riley Sager. Uh, I think it might be in my next book outlet order. I think. Um, but I'm just learning what kind of things I like. And I definitely don't like romance as much. I, I'm learning that I'm... I've always known that I'm a picky eater. But I'm learning that I'm a picky reader, too. I'm very picky about the books that I like. And for that reason, I'm just doing a major on haul. And I'm excited to get books that I'm really excited for. And for all the bookstores to open up again so that I can go shopping. I might have a little bit of a problem with books and shopping. Just like a little one, though. Um, <laughs> little off topic though, but thank you for joining me on this journey of books. And you can like and subscribe to me. I put out videos every Friday. And I try to do vlogs on Mondays, but sometimes I do secret projects. And the video just goes up whenever it's ready. Or... I just forget to vlog that week, but definitely every Friday, and I have a Patreon now, so you can, the link will be in the description box below, and yeah, all my social media is linked down below, so you could come talk to me, and yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys!